Black Lightning, Tuesdays at 9, 8 central on The CW. So this episode doesn't pop like the last two, but there are still a ton of interesting tidbits that I can't wait to get into, especially the ending. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my pan. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my spoiler-filled episodic recap of Black Lightning, episode three, Lawanda, the Book of the Burial. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, the recap, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads, and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. And before that, I also just want to remind you that there is a link down in the description box for a Facebook group and it is the largest Facebook group in the whole planet that does discussions about this group go find that link click it join the group it's a lot of fun there's a lot of uh, members in the group that are actually in the show and it's just a fun discussion so again that link is down in the description box below but this episode right here is being directed by Mark uh, Tendare he also directed a few episodes of Gotham and in 2012, he directed The Last House on the Left. And what I really do like, I mean, if you've seen my uh, reviews, my recaps for episodes one and two, you can just tell that I really do love the show. Uh, I can relate to it a lot. And one of the things I really like about it is there is no uh, villain of the week. It's not episodic. This is like an ongoing story. And so the next episode picks up exactly where the last one left off. And we know the last one was Lawanda, uh, the Book of Hope. This one is Lawanda, the Book of Burial. And last episode, unfortunately, Lawanda uh, got murdered, cold blood, just three shots in the chest, boom, 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 had the blood splattering everywhere. And that's just one thing that's about the show is that, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's somewhat graphic, not, you know, anything that'll make you vomit or, you know, make your stomach green or anything like that. But it is much more violent than what it shows like in the rest of the CW Arrowverse, like, uh, um, not Arrow, but uh, The Flash, uh, Supergirl, or uh, Legends of Tomorrow. And we don't necessarily know if this is going to cross over yet, or at least I don't. If you do, comment below. But this is as violent as, you know, Arrow in my opinion and that is one of the things that i really do like about it but the last episode lawanda um she was she was you know murdered unfortunately and then this episode picks up right where things left off and then we get you know a gentleman that i've he has like over 200 acting credits i like him a lot clifton powell he is reverend jeremiah and he is giving the burial service for uh, lawanda and that is just something that i did not expect because i really do love him and all the films that he's been playing over the past 10 20 plus years uh, he is a, pr a, a a very nice presence to see on the screen. You know, I always remember him as Pinky from Friday After Next that came out in 2002. So just kind of seeing him just trying to console everybody and, you know, keep the town, kind of keep the city in order, you know, in church or whatever. That was a nice surprise. If you knew he was already going to be debuting in the show, you know, that's good for you. I didn't. So when I saw him, I was like, OK, what's up? You know, my brother Clifton Powell, you know, I, I do enjoy all of your work. And so that that was a nice surprise. And and one of the first things that I really did like about his character is he was just like, you know, hey, uh, things are just horrible in this city. We got to do something. I'm going to get this march together. But Inspector Henderson just kind of wasn't feeling that. So early on in the episode, we kind of got to see them two go at it. And Chris Williams, um, uh, uh, Jefferson Pierce, you know, the principal, he's just trying to come in the middle. Like, oh, guys, you know, calm down. And Henderson kind of just stood up to him like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't be a hypocrite. You saying this, you saying that. But you up there on your pulpit with like a $25,000 watch and you wiping your head with like a little handkerchief. Don't tell me that I don't know how to do my job and that, you know, we got cooking crops. Look, I'm just one man. I'm just trying to do the best that I can do. And, you know, I know that we have this going on and that going on. But, you know, I do work hard. I have on my work boots. You know, what kind of boots do you have on? And so that were just kind of interested in because, you know, at first I really just wasn't feeling uh, Inspector Henderson that much. Uh, but him, you know, kind of stepping to Jeremiah and Clifton Powell right here, you know, that is something that I really did like and, you know, kind of made me gain respect for his character a lot more. So, you know, big ups to you, uh, Inspector Henderson. You know, I wasn't expecting that. So then, like, what I also like is we have Anessa, you know, the daughter of Black Lightning, you know, Jefferson Pierce. She has been trying, she, you know, the first two, ep the first episode, she broke the sink. 
Second episode, she threw the uh, the store robber across a few shelves. In this episode, she's feeling herself. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not mad at Sister Girl for that. You know, she going to a junkyard. Uh, she didn't want to um, participate in the family dinner. She stood up her family. That's kind of messed up. But she was going to the junkyard and, you know, she got a camera uh, set up and she just trying to train or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I, I like that because, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. If I was in her shoes and I was just kind of determined, de- you know, kind of finding out and determining if I have powers or not, you know what I'm saying? I would be doing the same thing. Like, hold up now. You know what I'm saying? I got to meet some powers, you know, so I'm going to go practice. Let's see what I can do. You know what I'm saying? And that's what she was doing. So she went to the junkyard and moving a little washer and dryer around and she, you know, hitting and kicking and hurting herself. And, you know, she can be a little discreet, you know, I mean, you still kind of you know, uh, out there, um, you know, where people can find you and record you and stuff like that. But I don't know, maybe she just doesn't care, but I kind of like how she was like, you know, Hey, you know, it's within the breathing, you know, and she was like, you know, she just started, you know, channeling, challenge, channeling, <laughs> channeling her chi. And, you know, she kicked that wash and dryer across and it just went flying across the junkyard. And so I was kind of feeling there, but something that I was not feeling is when she punched that, that stack, of garbage or whatever and that big piece of trash started coming down she could have moved out the way i don't think you was just 100 percent sure that you were going to be able to take that blow so she just kind of goes like this and it hits her and it kind of just brushes off her back or whatever you know what i'm saying so i really i was just like okay you know i was feeling this whole scene that little little tidbit right there kind of got on my nerves but it's not that big of a deal and i you know i'm not gonna make too much of a fuss about it but you know i was feeling her there she's going to the library uh she meets the other girl talking about you know genetic mutation and that's what she's studying and you know she notices that comic book in her the girl's pocket and they start you know rapping towards each other and things like that and i instantly i was like wait a minute you looking you're not you you looking at her a little bit more than you intrigued in that comic book you're gonna be cheating on your girl you know what i'm saying there's some infidelity going on but you know i'll talk about that in just a second now, somebody else that I really am feeling is Tobias. I really like him a lot. Martin Crondon Jones the third. Um, he is a good villain. You know, we got rid of Lala. He's gone. Uh, Latavius Lala. He's not in the picture anymore. Um, uh, Tobias killed him in the last episode. Gave him that that chokehold in the jail or whatever with the crooked cops. And so, you know, we see him on the scene coming through with a bag of money. And I'm just like, okay, really, really Tobias. I guess he's the top dog now. He's you know he's the head of the food chain or whatever. Whatever. But we get to see that, you know, no, Lady Eve is above him, played by Jill Scott. And Jill Scott looks lovely. She looks beautiful. I love her in that, ga- that gown she had. She had her two uh, henchmen behind her. And she's just like, my grandmother told me that if you don't write a thank you letter, it's like the event didn't happen at all. And, you know, Tobias, you know, he's really threatening or whatever. He got shooting people with harpoons and stuff like that. You know, so I'm really just kind of thinking that nobody's above him. But I, it's nice to see that there is somebody above uh lady above him lady eve just scott and i don't think lady eve is going to be getting down in the nitty-gritty and fighting and things like that i don't know if she did that in the comics i don't know if she's a made-up character just for the show right here if you know go ahead and let me know in the comment section below i really appreciate it not saying that i know everything but um what i do like that the one reason that we the, what i like about seeing someone over tobias is if tobias has any weaknesses um i don't know if he does um i don't know if he does it but if he does we're going to be able to see that come out we're going to be able to see you know that he's just not invincible because we know black lightning jefferson pierce is not invincible uh he's been hurt multiple times in flashbacks and in present day especially last episode so uh you know i i kind of just like to see that tobias has somebody over him that you know uh especially it is a woman as well so you know strong powerful woman characters there's a lot of those in this in the show so far and so um you know if there's any inconsistencies or weaknesses or anything like that that can exploit tobias i am really happy to see that and um, you know kind of just gets me more excited about the show um anissa ends up breaking up with her girlfriend she's dancing at the club and her girlfriend comes through there you know and um you know i, I mean i don't really have any too many feelings about that i don't care um, I'm kind of indifferent. I, I don't care, but I do care, you know, but Anissa, she was looking good in that spandex with the little cat ears with the wig on, you know, you was looking hot sister. You know what I'm saying? If you ever decide to come back over to the brothers, you know what I'm saying? What's up? You know, you know, I'm just joking, but no, you were, you were looking really good in, uh, your costume and the cosplay. That's dope. Um, 
I always love the Batman and uh, not Batman, but Batman and Alfred type of uh, scenario when, you know, the hero is going back to his lair, his cave and, you know, his hench, not his henchman, but, you know, the guy that he uh, helps him make all his gadgets and is kind of a, his guru and just a shoulder that he can lean on. And I'm, what I'm talking about is Black Lightning. Um, uh, Pierce Jefferson Pierce with uh, Peter Gamby, you know, because we go back and he's working on the suits. And I've said in my past few episodic recaps that I'm not really feeling the suit. Uh, I think it's just kind of, uh, you know, just kind of corny looking. But at the same time, I'm I'm getting more warmed up to it or whatever. Um, I don't like. Well, I'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the suit later. But we see Peter Gamby working on the suit on the gauntlets or whatever. And so that's just kind of cool because I always like upgrades or whatever. You know, in the suit, you gotta you gotta you gotta modify your suit. You gotta modify your weapons and your gadgets and all your tech to you know after every battle after every engagement to make sure that you're on top of your game and you know black lightning in that suit helps him channel the electricity or the lightning and it's kind of like a i don't want to say a shotgun but it has a wide uh, a wide gauge on it so you know peter gamby you know makes the little suit and he's just kind of hey I, I made it to where you can focus your uh, not your lasers but your lightning to where you know there's not a lot of collateral damage and so you know we got that there and you know that was pretty cool i liked the little simulation that they had there that, that was just cool i like the tech i don't know where he's getting all this money from and i don't know his background or how smart he is but at the same time you know i'm not gonna nitpick on it too much and you know i'm really feeling it but the craziest part of the whole episode it was just freaking hilarious when uh well not well well jennifer and her uh boyfriend uh what is his name khalil when they're up on the roof uh, outside of her uh, bedroom window and they're talking about sex i like the fact that he was able to come clean and just be like look you know i ain't ever done it before i was trying to impress you you know what i'm saying i was trying, just trying to get some swag you know that's the way to grow uh that's the way to go you know be honest the suit the truth the suit the truth will set you free and you know he didn't want to live this line anymore he was like look i'm sorry he was very apologetic about it he was sorry and she forgave him she's like you know what that makes me even like you a little bit more you know what i'm saying and i don't want to talk about any details about their sexual encounter if it may come in the future or not because they're minors you know in the show and that just may come across a little creepy but you know i mean this seems somewhat realistic to high school love and how things may go down exactly it's not the same for everybody but you know what i'm saying that, that was a good scene but the craziest part what uh, of the whole episode to me was when she gonna just go to her parents and be like hey guys <laughs> i'm ready to have sex you know just like it's nothing i just bust out laughing i'm like what the hell like i would never ever just i mean i talked to my parents about sex when i was younger but i didn't ever go to them and be like okay i'm ready to have sex now i mean is that normal i don't know i'm not in everybody else's uh, household as they're growing up but i mean uh, men out there when you were young men around that age did you just you know was you that honest with your parents your guardians women were you ever that honest with your parents or guardians i was just like whoa what the hell and it's just funny because lynn and jefferson pierce they addressed that later in his office like whoa we both just you know uh, um, got blown out of the sky crash and burn you know what i'm saying like that just caught us completely off guard because they just didn't know what to say you know what i'm saying it's like wow like you just gonna lay it on us like that that you just ready to have sex like it's just no big deal and she just sitting there like yeah i'm ready eating her vegetables and I, i'm just tripping out you know what i'm saying and i think pierce said like two things i don't remember what he said but he was like yeah and uh i mean they have to it's at the same time kind of respect the fact that she's not sneaking around and they didn't uh lynn did say that or whatever but it was just so funny that she just said it like it was nothing and just kept eating her vegetables and just smiling like she was gonna get some high fives from her uh family's like all right you go girl you know what i'm saying you want some techniques that just, that, that would be crazy disgusting but um yeah that was just kind of just like shocking to me that she just really um she really you know we're just putting it out there. Um, it was also very funny when uh, Pierce confronted Khalil in the hallway, just like, man, how do you how do you shower? And I was like, man, where are you going with this? And then he talking about how do you drop? And that made sense. Talking about, I don't want you getting no athletic feet, you know, where it don't belong with my daughter. You know, that was cool. Um, now, me, on the other hand, I'm, I'm not a parent. I don't have a teenage girl, but I can only imagine to where if I was in that situation, I understand that was on campus and he's the principal, so you can't be physical, you know, you go to jail for that. But I'm just thinking like I would be, I would have my hand up like, say, man, you ain't going to just smash my daughter. Like, you know, it ain't going down like that. You plan on marrying her or something like, you know, yeah, I mean, I know they're young, but, you know, even though Pierce kind of did let him have the, the fire right there, um, uh, 
I just think I would have went a little harder if that I was in that situation. Um, you know, but hey, it is what it is. And so now we got this march coming up. I like that Jer Jer Jeremiah is just, you know, trying to get, you know, his hundred people together and go march in the streets and get the city back. And Jill Scott, Lady Eve is like, no, nah, we cannot have that. You know what I'm saying? You better put some fear in them. And Tobias is like, look, you know, take this gun. You talking about you want to take Lala's plot spot, move up in the ranks. He talking to one of his henchmen. You know, here's the gun. Tobias, was it really necessary for you to stab his hand in the desk? You messing up your desk, bro. I don't know how much money you got, you know what I'm saying? But you got to take care of that wood, that marble, or whatever your desk is made of. Talking about bleeding. It's your fault that he bleeding on the desk or whatever. But I like to do it. I was like, you know, he don't want to get his handprints on it. So he's like, hey, I don't got no gloves, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's when he stabbed him in the hand. But um, we're coming to the end of the episode where they're marching in the street. Everybody, I forgot. What, what was they saying? Uh, freedom? 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 I think they were saying freedom. And uh, Black Lightning is up on the, on the uh, I'm finna say on the mountain, on top of the building. And that's just one thing that I'm just still not a fan of is a suit. You got these big lightning bolt neon uh, neon um, lights on your chest, bruh. You know, like, what's up with that? People can see you up there. You know what I'm saying? I know you're not trying to hide from the people, but if you're trying to protect, I, I don't know. I mean, um, my last episode, somebody was like, because I, I complained that, you know, Black Lightning showed himself in the middle of the street before he went to the top of the penthouse. And somebody in the comments, rightfully so, was just like, well, B, that's kind of the point. He's trying to let everybody know that he's back. But, you know, I'm just think, kind of thinking, like, what if somebody would have sniped him up there? I, I don't know, because he's not necessarily on the cop's side just yet. Henderson called him a vigilante. But I like how he just jumped down put up the lightning shield or whatever it do was empty in the clip da, 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 and it wasn't going through that was badass i didn't know uh black lightning can do that and then he turned around and did the little focus attack and zapped the other bad guy so that was cool tobias was mad came through to me oh these uh happy church going negroes you know what i'm saying they all want to go to heaven and they don't want to die they singing and they were singing amazing grace and you know that was cool but i would have liked it if everybody would have ran thank you black lightning you know they're shooting you know what I'm saying? Get away. They don't know how many bad guys are left. And, you know, uh, old girl with the, the death in her eyes, like Lady Eve said, just got talking about, hey, man. You know, Tobias like, man, shoot that electrical dude or whatever. I forgot. He didn't say electrical MF. But uh, I forgot what he said. But it was kind of funny. I don't know if she was meaning to shoot Jeremiah, but her shot sucks. Um, I don't know if she needs to go back to school or whatever to learn how to become a marksman or something like that. Kind of out in the open. Uh, but... And I, oh, I can't wait to get to this part because I'm just so confused what's going on. And you probably know what I'm trying to say, kind of like a WTF moment. But I guess the bullet went through um, Jeremiah and then hit um, Khalil and, you know, it went through his body. And I'm like, what? Because I, I was like, I didn't hear two gunshots, but I guess it went through uh, something like that. But it's so sad that he's hurt and Jer I, I th they're both going to survive. But Khalil may not make it. And that's very unfortunate. Um you know, and um, but last night, these guys, why in the world did Gamby delete the file? What are you doing, Gamby? Are you crooked? Is Tobias in your pocket as well? Like, what's going on? I cannot wait to see. I mean, they, that's I guess like a little cliffhanger in a way because I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. But that's crazy, man. That's messed up or whatever. Like, you, 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 you doing some wrong deleting the file. I mean, if y'all caught him on camera pulling the trigger. I mean, there you go. You got Lala out the way. You got Tobias out the way. But I don't know. I cannot wait to see why um, why Gamba deleted it or whatever. I'm, I'm nervous. So so we got Gamba deleting files. You know, Henderson calling people Black Light and Vigilante. And Jeremiah and Khalil are shot. That's how the episode ended. Um, and I really did enjoy it, guys. I'm really am loving this show. Three for three. All these episodes have been great. And uh, it's just fantastic, guys. You know, but that is just my opinion you know what did you think of the show did you do are you liking it so far are you hating it you know is it turning you on is it turning you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you don't that's fine go ahead and subscribe to my channel go to my website check me out there bookmark it and also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter it's right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below and like i said guys it would really help me out if you like my uh facebook page there's a link down below and also click the uh facebook group it is the largest with there they have uh thousands of thousands of thousands of people in the group it's the largest facebook group 
uh, in the world online right now that is discussing Black Lightning. It is very well organized. There's a ton of members. We got members that are actually in the show that are in the group too. So join right now. Click the link in the description box so you can join that group on facebook it's free <laughs> but yeah it's a lot of fun and uh, i really like all the discussions that they are doing over in that group but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my review my recap my reaction of black lightning episode three lawanda the book of burial and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion peace